There's some calls coming in. I want to go to John, who's calling in Texas. John, you're on the air. I have a question uh, concerning that assassination attempt. The sheriff in that town stated that he didn't have the security details because he wasn't the sitting president, which would have made him a federal employee, technically. But the fact that he didn't have, and he's not the sitting president, wouldn't that give Ron DeSantis the authority to take that case? Because I'm afraid that if he doesn't take that case, we might not really know who this person is or what his problem was or why he did that. Right. I think, Jordan, maybe you could could follow up that the legal ramifications of that. Yeah, I think, listen, this is going to be a federal case because President Trump is a federal candidate and he is uh, the, the issues that were involved involved uh, Secret Service uh, federally. Now, I, again, who gets charged and how they get charged, I think, will come under both federal and potentially state law. Uh, but the federal charges usually kind of trump the state charges. They go ahead first. Uh, that doesn't mean there couldn't be state charges uh, to find out. It's not too hard to piece together, though, if one what is we've seen online is correct. This was someone highly motivated to try and recruit mercenaries to come and fight in Ukraine. He was in Ukraine. He was doing interviews with the New York Times, interviews on television. Uh, he was uh, someone known uh, to some uh, other politicians as well. And uh, he's a lifelong Democrat. He believed, I guess, that yeah, he, he said it, that Donald Trump would be disastrous for a continued uh, war that Ukraine wants to, I guess, wage or he wants to wage against Russia. I'm not even saying that's definitely Ukraine policy. So what I want to know is who else is he connected to? Did someone encourage him to take these kind of actions? Were they Ukrainian? I'm not even saying they were Ukrainian government, but and I'm, I'm not trying to, to, again, make statements that we can't back up yet. But because we have a living, uh, a failed assassin, which is uh, uh, not the usual situation, uh, because we have a living failed assassin, we've got to find out, is he really doing this all by himself? Uh, and, uh, you know, I know that they talked to his son, who's had a falling out with him, but said he previously uh, had never been violent before, never had even owned guns, but they didn't have a relationship anymore. So, so, something about this Ukraine war changed this guy, and he's all over pictures, all over D.C., all over Ukraine, and it's all about war, and it's all about how President Trump is bad uh, for Ukraine. And uh, I, I think, again, there, there are a lot of the, the, the interrogations that are happening right now uh, need to really get some answers to the American people. This is obviously a very different uh, failed assassin than the failed assassin in Pennsylvania. And Jordan, uh, also to follow up on that, that uh, section of U.S. Code, 18 U.S. Code 351 that we talked about as you were traveling into the studio where there is that whoever attempts to kill or assassinate uh, or kidnap an individual designated in subsection A, which includes major presidential or vice presidential candidates, it, it specifically states that if federal investigative or prosecutive jurisdiction is asserted for a violation of this section, such assertion shall suspend the extra exercise of jurisdiction by state or local authority until federal action is terminated. So if they are investigating this as an assassination attempt, then the state, to John's call, would have no jurisdiction for these purposes right now. But one other thing you bring up is the, the Ukraine side as well. One of the things that was reported by when the New York Times platformed this individual in their profile on foreign fighters in Ukraine, one thing that this individual was reportedly working on was getting former Afghani fighters, trying to get them passports through Pakistan, fraudulent passports to get them to Ukraine to fight. So now you're looping in the Middle East and you have to wonder what other contacts, what negative contacts. There was one fighter that was in Iran, apparently. And we know that he had also spoken positively on social media of Iran. Was Iran able to get to this individual? Those are the type of things that we know the federal government has to get to the bottom of to figure out who this guy was. And I need to do so very quickly, because if you've got actors like that involved, this is likely not the only person they've tried uh, or they have been successful in uh, uh, you know, figuring out how to get to the, in their mind so that they would carry out or attempt to carry out uh, this kind of uh, assassination attempt. I'm going to call it exactly what it is every time. Uh, I thought the mainstream media's initial response to this was horrendous yesterday. I mean, I don't know if you guys saw it, but the initial response was the gunshots were fired somewhere near a golf course, and that's not so unusual because it's near a main road. 
and that really President Trump had nothing to worry about. They didn't know any of the facts yet. And yet that's what the mainstream media tried to play it down. This, though, this event is on the hands of Joe Biden and Vice President Harris and Mayorkas. And if they don't fix this, more people will get killed before Election Day. And that is uh, uh, really that is something we cannot accept in the United States of America. And I think the reason why you saw those quick notes from Harris and these others is they know that. And they know that th- this is on their hands and they better get it fixed or else the American people are not going to come out and vote for Kamala Harris if she can't even run a government that keeps Donald Trump safe.